Welcome to chapter C2 of the textbook on sustainability management. This one is about sustainable human resource management. Let's have a look what this is about. So after reading this chapter, you'll be able again to do a couple of things. First, you'll be able to distinguish employees as a means and also as an end of sustainable human resource management. So that's basically two perspective of that area of sustainable human resource management. The first one asks how um, to foster employees sustainable behavior at work to improve a company's sustainability performance. That would be the means part. And the second question or perspective would be what a company can, could, or should do for its employees. So that would be the end part of sustainable human resource management. Then you'll be able to illustrate different interventions to increase the likelihood of employees to act sustainably. So that would be the first perspective. And you'll learn that companies can either recruit uh, sustainability, uh, sustainability conscious employees in the first place. They can also improve the attention of the existing employees towards sustainability. They can reduce barriers for sustainable behavior at work, providing uh, certain measures. They can improve employees knowledge and the skills to perform sustainable behavior. They can use feedbacks or rewards or recognition to develop a company culture that is more catering towards sustainability. And they can also encourage employees self commitment and social support. And we'll discuss certain measures how they can do that and the other interventions throughout the chapter. Then you'll be able to explain how structural measures can be used to implement sustainability throughout a company. And you'll learn that such structural measures, for example, um, encompass uh, having a chief sustainability officer or a sustainability management team, maybe even having a board member responsible for sustainability and that anchoring s sustainability as a topic in organizations uh, in, in their routines and processes um, can be strengthened by having such structural measures. And finally, you'll be able to illustrate what companies can do for their employees through sustainable human resource management. That is the second perspective that we discussed in the beginning. And you'll learn that companies have responsibility, for example, to, to provide secure employment to their employees, to care about health and safety issues at work, to provide decent working conditions and also social protection to allow, if possible, for a reasonable amount of flexibility for the employees to improve employability, for example, through trainings and so on, and to ensure non-discrimination, fairness, equality, and diversity. That would all be measures that regard sustainable human resource management in the second perspective so that um, employees are an end of such um, activities. As always, the chapter comes with some features. It's three um, in this case here. The first one is about sustainability in business. It discusses the sustainability aspects in top management compensation as an incentive for top management using the example of the Bayer Corporation, the German multinational corporation. Then we have two features on sustainability in society. First one is about negative health effects of long working hours. Some interesting, um, shocking figure, figures actually. And the second feature on sustainability in society is about gender pay gaps and also ethnicity pay gaps. Also some interesting facts in that regard, how diversity uh, looks in reality.